Pice versus Orange is what we got coming up next. And uh, what else is not to like here? Orange, uh, you can see that Divine Shield bubble around the classes at the bottom. It means he was protected during that ban phase, ineligible for ban afterwards. Uh, Orange has protected his warrior here. Uh, a pretty strong departure from some things. I'm curious about that. Uh, Tice had protected his Druid in this one. Interesting. Uh, Orange has had his Druid banned away in this match, and uh, Tice has had his Priest banned away in this matchup as a result of it. So, Gallon, give me the lowdown. What are you seeing here? Um, for me, what I'm most excited about is going to be see Orange playing some Highlander Mage. Uh, that seems like his pet deck, and it's not banned away this series, so it's very likely that he'll queue it at some point. Yeah, he has uh, been known to, to play that deck from time to time, and I'm looking at Warrior, Paladin, Druid across the other side of the board. Paladin is really, I think, the spot for Orange where there is some subjectivity here. You have a good matchup with Warrior, you have a bad matchup with Mage, you have uh, what's considered a slightly negative matchup with the Priest versus uh, I personally think Priest is... I'm is sorry, excuse me. Slightly positive, yeah. Yeah, excuse me. Uh, you have a slightly positive matchup with Priest versus Paladin. I just said it the opposite. I keep doing that today. But that matchup is kind of like watch, wa uh, walking a tightrope for both players, right. I'd say. And so if for Orange, if you're going to do like the stator thing, IQ Priest, Priest, the best deck, that gives Tice a very clear image of where to go with Warrior at that point. Now the mind games start, and it starts flowing and flowing and flowing, and we end up with Priest for Orange, Paladin for Tice. Priest is really strong. Well, what I thought was Tice anyway. It's the chair. <laughs> oh, there's Tice. Orange has a pretty weak hand, I would say. Light Warden is a is a fairly good card versus uh Paladin, and there are some hands like imagine imagine Orange had a Intertolvier Circle of Healing Divine Spear Inner Fire. Suddenly you're looking at like a pretty reasonable hand, honestly, to full keep. That being said, uh, well one second, I need to. Blessings to you. Referencing the list? Yes, reference the list. Whether Tice does have a single copy of Sudo in there, so that strategy comes a lot worse. It also comes a lot worse when the only minion you have is Light Warden to keep a hand like that. So, keeps Light Warden, tosses the rest. Makes sense to me. Seems good. Looking at the ban of Druid I from Tice's side, um, it is Malagos Druid that Orange is piloting, <laughs> so it makes a lot more sense to ban that with Tice's lineup. A lot of bad matchups across the board with that one. I like Malagos Druid. It's it's tough, honestly. There's a lot of decisions that you have to make. You have to sequence things in you know very specific order for it to work out. I like that. Yeah, it's a hard deck. Puts pressure on me. Also, like combo decks. Tice faced with a lot of pressure early on. Priest is a combo deck. Um, yeah. Or Shark Cleric plus other cards. It's not, not one I'm too fond of. It's not, it's not really, not as much scrapping as I like to do with a regular combo deck. Fair enough. I would like to see Orange still develop into the board, if you can. Well, what's the most development you get? You know, I think there's some opinion to saying that Hero Power is some of the most development mm. you can have right now. Tice can check that with several different cards. Go on. True Silver Champion over the following turns. Well, it takes two turns away, so. Sure. But your hand doesn't actually, like, protect. <laughs> Not yet. Blow away, Light Warden. What is in this is a tough turn. We've been saying it for the whole season. Priest turns are, they're very powerful, but they're very difficult. Every decision carries magnified weight. It's tough. Further development into the board. Like to see it. Another thing about this is that it sets up for a very good circle of healing next turn. The Sometimes. way that the way the, the way that Orange did it is if Tice plays like a one or one or two health minion, right? Like Crystal Smith Kangor, for example, Orange attacked with the Light Ward, which means that it's damaged, right? What that means is, is that he will not have to attack with it next turn for it to be damaged, so we can use it to go face. I am very concerned for all players involved right now. This is a tough turn. Well, it's the Acolyte you saw. <laughs> like, do you, uh, I mean, the, you, just <laughs> everything about do you do the thing where you hit this too many times? What? Like, that sounds dangerous. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's time to take a turn off. So now, I think if Orange doesn't draw a health buff here, he is vulnerable to uh, to True Silver Champion. So his alternative to that plan would be 
if he wants to, he could bump the Acolyte twice, circle of healing, and just smash face with the Light Warden. If you... If you if you give them one draw, give them one draw is the moral of the story. Yeah, give them one. Draw. Take Cycling, the one draw. Apparently, cycle the circle. He's looking for a health buff. He's specifically looking for a health buff on that light warden. Second light, uh, second Northshire cleric as well. So now the question is, if you play the second Northshire cleric, can Tice use like a tempo equality and follow up strong on you? You have an acolyte to check a consecrate afterwards or wild pyromancer afterwards, so just jam the Northshire. Smart. Player. Is someone injured? And subdue doesn't necessarily handle light warden. Something else orange. We are also talking about cards that just aren't in Tice's hand right now. Well, that's a, it, we're talking from Orange's perspective. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, he's looking at everything perspective-wise. What that means is that when Orange does sees no True Silver Champion come down this turn, I think he's going to be pretty pretty darn happy. You have to think about what that means for the rest of the hand. Tice has multiple options here. He could Prismatic Lens. He could also Flash of Light and then Subdue the Light Warden. But using a Subdue like that... Hammer! Hammer of Wrath is another one. Just clear a Cleric from the board. Oh. Well, that's a weird draw. So you have a couple ways of developing here. You can either Psycho Pump for a Cleric guaranteed, or you can just play an Acolyte, heal your opponent's face, and then hit them in the face. So you'd heal because you just gain that damage back from the Light Warden. You have no other targets. I'm breaking out my pom-poms. I'm cheering for Northshire Cleric. Psycho Pomp. Yeah, Psycho Pomp Pomp. Pomp. If you could, if you could do like the first half of that, it seems like way weirder. Like just Psycho. So you know just mean? truncate the back half yeah. of the day. <laughs> well, that's kind of what you were doing. No, I'm adding. The, I'm doing the opposite. Well, then it would be psycho, psycho, pomp, pomp. Like, that's just like, Brian, please don't call me Brian Kibler, Kibler. Exactly. Very accurate. Psycho, please don't call me psycho, pomp, pomp. Nailed it. <laughs> Thank you. I think Orange had some consideration on what the Topsy Turvy looked like uh, to bolster the Light Warden, and after not seeing True Silver Champion, is like, you know what? Just don't need to do I'm that. I'm gonna say something right now. Ty's hand sucks. It's bad. It's really bad. But also Orange's hand, it, it was very it's... good. <laughs> yes. I wonder. You can flash a light your face and then subdue the five four. It draws a card. Like a nice healthy uh, game of Do I Die this turn? Prismatic Lens, you're probably not dead. There are hands that beat you, though. Wild Pyromancer, Circle of Healing, yep. plus a Topsy Turvy would just yep. crush you. You're, you're under threat of a lot of things. Yeah. And so for Tice, it's about navigating through that. When is your inflection point? When can you afford to play around? Prismatic Lens draws two. Flash of Light draws one. Okay. One okay. mana Consecrate. That's that is super important. Ty suddenly is on a draw to uh, come back in this game, honestly. Uh, I'm seeing another Psycho Pomp. Yeah, you, and you're playing another Psycho Pomp, too, I hope. Wow. Suddenly, if... if I mean, even if Ty... If he plays a Psycho Pomp, he gets two clerics. If Ty has a board clear with a mana reduced... Um, with mana reduction from the Prismatic Lens, you which in this case is a Consecrate... He will have two 1-1 one, one injured Northshire clerics in play with a never-set ritualist in hand. <laughs> so, yeah. That sounds pretty good. Orange just has fantastic setups. Now, I'm curious if you need to go for that. You know, the, the, us, utilizing, the, the same thing. utilizing the Acolyte of Pain to offset Consecration, as you had mentioned earlier, I, I thought was really clever. Um, and I think that right now, bolstering the Light Warden and threatening that... It leaves you with a, I'd, I'd call a technical, more powerful card in hand with Psycho Pomp. To be fair, every time that you do it in the immediacy, it doesn't actually add any damage. So when at, every turn after the first turn where you heal your opponent's face, that's when you start getting extra damage. All right. Well, I think Tice is fishing for timeout. It's not it. It's not timeout. Are, you're still alive, right? If you go Crystal Smith, Kangor, uh, Flash of Light, count the damage on the board. You There's 12, 13, 14, 17, 18. 
you, you should also just subdue. He's after. going for subdue. Yeah, subdue just makes a lot more sense in that case. Second consecration. So you are offered board clear potential as well. You have a consecrate, consecrate elven archer. Oh no, the elven archer costs four mana. My apologies. Would Thalnos do it? You already played a Thalnos this game. Injured Tolvir is a fantastic pickup for Orange. It lets him draw two cards. I'm counting 12 damage available for Orange just with the cards that are here. What that strikes me as is draw more. With a full board, too, you can't buff with Beaming Sidekick. Divine Spirit? Divine Spirit is... Uh, An 15. extra three damage. Does Inner Fire do anything? It gives you an extra two on board. That's also 15 right now. Is there anything with like Topsy Turvy Inner Fire? No. Is that 14 actually? 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It's 14 actually, Top excuse me. Yep, because you get two extra from each one. Weird. Not bad, though. I mean, you're putting your opponent down to, you know, seven. Shrinker Consecrate is a clear. Yeah, there's the Northshire Cleric left. I don't yeah, see another painful. option, though. Can you double Consecration? Mm. It leaves up a 2-5 as well. And your play would be Novice Engineer. So you'd leave up, and you'd also give them two cards with the Acolyte instead of one. Sounds to me like it is Shrink Ray Consecration. Oh, it's a weird spot, too, because you would love to try and risk to draw a timeout, but Let if you take that risk and it fails, you die. You also only have one card in hand that you could get, so Prismatic Lens. Yeah, I think it's just the line. And you'd have, you'd have to be doing this anyways. Like, there's very, very rare scenarios where you actually get, like, an additional clear on the Cleric. That's a Divine Spirit. That's three. That's lethal. That's uh, is, that th is that lethal? If you topsy first. No, I apologize. That's not lethal. I don't know. I count six from that. That's yeah, only six. If it was a... Um, Go for a draw. One, four. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Never mind. Hmm. Draw a card. Yeah, draw a card. But There's worlds where you can like topsy a minion and then silence it back to its original stat line. I was thinking of like, would that do anything? But the answer is no. You could also just play a Buon Samdi here. Yeah, that's the that's really the difference, right? You psycho pump into blade master, Buon Samdi, or heal for but lethal. I like I like healing first. Yeah, I like going for the lethal. Not it. Not it. Not bad though. Orange can just load up onto the board again, if he if he wants to. Is that injured Neferset? Psycho Pomp. Injured Tolvir, injured Blade Master. Injured Blade Master, Neferset Ritualist. Ooh. Everything has like some implications to it. Yep. You could also just play this to have a reborn minion in play, so that way the Neferset Ritualist could um I like that most. Ooh. You have a Topsy in hand, so I like the inner fire and pressure. At the same time, though, you play around Shrink Ray by saving that inner fire. Suddenly you can go like Topsy Turvy. Or I Shrink guess Ray you just, just got used. You just have the silence, anyways. Never mind. Yeah, and Shrink Ray just saying? got used. What am I saying? I don't know. Well, I know what you're saying. I it's just... dumb. That's that's the answer. Yeah. It's, it's dumb. And for like four different reasons. <laughs> Gallon's saving all the smart stuff for later. Really? It's like, I got a match! <laughs> yeah. Mm. Got it confused. Now get on here. It's like, is this guy like <laughs> who I'm playing against? Really? Is this really how he views the match? What? I can do whatever I want. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, I actually know how math works now, Gadon. Yeah, well, Tice now is, he, I think his back is officially pinned against the wall. I don't think he has an option. He has to draw for timeout. What he's seeing is the draw from Novice Engineer or the Prismatic Lens. This has to be timeout. If it has to be timeout, isn't starting with Novice a bit better? Um, no, 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 it could be Shervala. Could it be Shervala? No, okay. The reason that I want to say that is if you Novice first, you are, if the timeout costs three, you can still play it. But if you Prismatic Lens first, it's always going to cost two. Correct? So if you do not see the 
the timeout first. He did. <gasps> Is he live? What just happened? I think he's alive. No, he's not. He's not. He's not. Neferset kills Topsy. him. Neferset kills him oh, super dead. He doesn't have an air fire. No, he's a Topsy. He's a Divine uh, Spear Topsy. Ritualist. Ritualist. Yeah. Wow, that was a tight last moment. Was there... What was the minion that he killed? Was it a Northshire Cleric? Was there a world where Tides is supposed to... In that spot. You can't lethal from that spot. Well, you, can hold, you can hold your at the 2-6, kill the 2-1, and then deny a Neferset divine outcome. Correct? I don't I don't know. It was tough. D D we were, Shavala was we, on top. We it were was arguing weird. about... I'm it was just strange. It was so sudden. Like, I wasn't expecting 25 to just pop out of the Holy huh. Wrath. I, don't, I clearly don't think number. Tice was either, but... It was a big number. And then when he saw it, he's like, oh, my gosh. And he had to get moving. Like... I'd have to go. I'd have to go back and sit and look really at it. Really tough. Like, in my head, he was pushed out of the game without being able to buy another turn. So on the initial thing, I believe there was a way for him to get one extra draw, like out of his deck. Like he could squeeze out one more draw from his deck if he started with novice engineer instead of the timeout. Because the only or, minions... instead of the instead of the prismatic lens. Because well, if he had Shrivala, that's upsetting. But your th explain your thought. Your here's if what you're thinking. You got the only mana, minions left in the deck got, are two cost. Yes. And so hopefully, it, it, Shrival is a failure. You got eight mana. If you start with the novice <laughs> engineer and the timeout is three mana, you can still play it. Correct. If it's not the next draw is timeout, you can prismatic lens after the novice, and then the timeout is going to cost two mana. So it's two plus four. You got two left with your eight mana. You can still play the timeout. Yes. If you start with the prismatic lens, and it's not a timeout. When you play the Novice Engineer, you're going to get a timeout that costs three mana, so two plus four plus three is nine. You got eight. It's eight a weird is less sequence. Than nine. But anyways, there's also like a whole bunch of other different factors to consider. I wasn't even thinking about Holy Wrath being a two-mana card. And you could like either. Holy Wrath at 2-6 get a Shrivala off the top. I wasn't thinking about that either. I was thinking about that either. <laughs> there was a lot of things to think a about. A lot, yeah. Kind of the point. Even Gallon's overwhelmed. Very well. Gallon's too smart for his own good when it comes to casting. He's got a million thoughts going through his head. It's a struggle sometimes because <laughs> there's so many different things going on. Like even we were talking about the the topsy turn with uh the Pavel game that happened earlier, where it was just you had five or six different ways that Bunny Hopper could have actually like used a single copy of Topsy Turn. The most just, important one. Talk about you know. that one. We gotta go to a break. When we come back though, we're getting into game number two of this. Right now, Orange up a game over Tice, and we're gonna find out if he can bring it back. Tice that is or if Orange can close. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Around the Fern. Uh, I'm Nathan Zamora. That's admirable, you can call me. And I'm joined today uh, by a very special player. Please state your name. Uh, Christos Sakopoulos. I thought it was Fino. Like I've always called you Fino at tournament. Well, yeah, people call me Fino, Fano, Phenomeno, whatever, whatever you want to okay. call it. Okay, well, yeah. I think you need to pick one of them though. It's not just Phenomeno. Uh, let's, go with, let's go with Fano. Let's go with Fano. Fano. Yeah, yeah Okay. Um, you're happy with that? Mm hmm. I think it will be easier for you. Uh, so, so, where are you living right now, and, and what's that like? What's that like for you in Hearthstone? Uh, yeah, now I'm just living in Greece with my parents. We have a really big apartment, and on the first floor, uh, there's like a movie theater that my dad like operates. Th like, you guys make movies there? Uh, no, no, there's no movie making in the movie theaters. You just show the movie. So, like, you, you could just, you just show them other yes, people? Yes, so people come and they can watch the movie in the movie theater. But you don't make them. No, we don't make them. We get the movie and we show the movie in the theater. I, I thought the whole point of the movie... We just sell tickets, we don't make movies, and people come and watch the movie. Okay, um, well, I, I get. let's just agree to disagree on that. Phenomeno, Fino, Fino, whatever you want to call it. I'm done. But, but we, we're in an interview. My name is uh, John Vesberg. In game, I'm Orange. How I came up with my username is really no interesting story about it. I just always really liked the color orange. What Grand Buster means to me, it, it means a, a lot of things. I've been enjoying these past few years like no other. It's been the best years of my life. But starting off from square one each and every year has certainly been quite brutal. But finally getting like 
some recognitions and like, hey, you guys are the top players in the world of this game. It really means a lot to me. It makes it so these past years of work has definitely been worth it. What I'm looking forward to most about the Grandmaster Spearn is definitely that I get to compete every single week against what is considered to be the absolute best players in the world. The thing I played most throughout the years has definitely been mid-range decks. A deck that takes on an aggressive role against slower decks and takes on a defensive role against the faster decks. To prove myself that I really make it among the best is if I make it to the global finals. It, it's a pretty big goal, it's gonna be very, very hard. I, I think. My name is Thijs. How did I come up with my username? Well, my name is Thijs, and first I was called Thijs NL because Thijs was taken already, so I couldn't take it anymore. And I was a very creative person because I put up my two country letters behind it, and that's how I came up with it. But I look forward the most in Grandmasters is the prestige. I have been very looking forward to a more like league-based system, so I was very happy when Grandmaster got announced and really looking forward for like the rivalry between people by all the matches and I am actually thinking it's gonna be great. What makes me very unique is that I just really am very passionate about Hearthstone. Of course, a lot of fun comes also with winning, but for me it's also the engagement with the community and just like making people so happy sometimes by just like being on stream, being online, playing in a tournament. That motivates me a lot as well to just be there for the community. I have a very preferred style of playing. It's definitely something that I want to be less predictable, but uh, it's always going to be a challenge for me. I want to just prove over and Welcome back to Hearthstone Grandmasters for Europe. We're on Scintillating Sunday today, which means we have a sixth bonus match that's taking place. I'm Nathan, that's Admirable Zamora. I'm joined by Edward Gallen Goodwin, who is an America's Grandmaster, playing later today, as well as casting. Gotta make sure I don't fry my brain. That last Whew. game was a little bit too complicated at the it, very end. It was extremely complicated, I think, throughout yeah. the match. Even and I was like stumbling over what to do, so... Got to imagine it's tough for Tice. It's super tough. Yeah. And it, not only that, but, you know, Tice, he has to be feeling pressure in this scenario because there is yep. still the nightmare situation that can happen. He's got this match and then two more remaining afterwards. If he, if he can't win a match, that's when the disaster scenario strikes. So the fact that he's down a game here, every single game loss is that small step closer to that disaster scenario. You will start to feel the pressure. I do think he has a small breath of breath of fresh air though because he got quest druid versus control warrior which i think has been traditionally favored for quest druid however there's a couple things to keep in mind one is tice is on just a normal quest druid list not a maligos quest druid list uh maligos quest druid i think is unbelievably favored versus warrior if it isn't pressured in the early game um but now since it's not a deck that focuses on burn damage orange can actually have a game plan of stabilizing in the end game you know he doesn't really need to worry about his life total just about dealing with the board yeah, it's a little bit tougher for him to deal with the board if you look at Orange's list in particular. Uh, there's no Super Collider in the deck list, and there's one copy of Dynamatic. So Dynamatic taking a, a not, you know, a spot in the deck, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's I don't think it's super good versus Druid. In fact, I would often consider it kind of a liability because there's just too much stuff on board. It ends up being a tool that's five mana. Well, I hope this works out right. That's what I feel like a lot of times it's automatic. But the no super collider means that like Oasis Surger is a massive threat against Orange at that point. I mean, Super Collider is probably the best card in the game to deal with what Druid wants to do in the mid game. You yeah. can deal with three waves of o Oasis Surgers, which often happens with uh, Worthy Expedition, right? Like, Floop? Yeah. Like, Floop doesn't, you know, you're not entirely mm. handling a Floop with Super Collider, but it's close. It's close a enough. massive cut into the yeah. amount of work that you have to do. Super Collider is one of those weird weapons where sometimes it's just like five assassinates. Yes, and sometimes it's take 20. And sometimes it's deal three damage to your opponent's face. <laughs> it's got a tremendous ceiling and a very low floor. I love that card. Yeah. I remember um, when that card was released, and uh, I was talking with Zelay about it, and Zelay was like, this card's absurd. And I was like, really? You think so? He's like, yeah. Odd we just hit the tank up button with Odd Warrior and then play that. And I was like... I could see it, but I don't, I'm not sold on the idea. It's like day two, like someone played a super collider, and I was like, I am dead. I am never getting minions <laughs> on board. Again. It. It's a really interesting one as well, because it like 
comes in and out of the meta, and as soon as it like starts coming in, people are like, oh, Super Collider's back. We need to start having game plans against it, and then it'll go out, and then, okay, it's fine. And then yeah. It's like... It's really good when other people aren't bringing it, and then it's not that great when other people are bringing yeah. it. So it's just... So, in other words, when you bring it, looks fantastic. When I bring it, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this Town Crier is upsetting. He has drawn... Well, don't look uh, at it, then. But it's in his hand. Well, don't look at it. What? Yes, there are only three Rush Minions in Orange's deck. He doesn't have a weird, restless, or Militia Commander. The card sucks. Well, that's just wrong. <laughs> Literally incorrect. It's very wrong. Just Restless Mummy's good. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm not upset by Orange's Hand. I think Orange's Hand is fantastic looking. You have two Morden yes. with our Mega Dillo and a Zilliax to boot on top of that. Let me clarify. The Town Crier was upsetting. The Armadillo is... Whoa! With two Morden and Zilliax? It is tough to upset me with those, with those okay. left three cards. Yes. Very tough. An adequate hand... Bare minimum. Yeah, I could have like I could have like a boot, a picture of my grandma, and then like a six of spades, and I'd be pretty happy with my hand right now. D does the boot have taunt? It's just a boot. Does it have taunt? It doesn't even have a mana cost. You can't even play it. How angry is your grandmother? Uh, she's not very angry at all. She looks. Pretty so that happy. one doesn't have taunt either. Well, it's a picture of my grandma. It doesn't have a mana cost. What to do? But could you upgrade it with Army Dillo? My point is, with three less cards in hand, I'm happy. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> as long as I have those left three. You really need to work on your Hearthstone decks if you're including boots and pictures <laughs> of your grandma in there. Jesus. Yeah, I really cut this six of spades. <laughs> Ace up your sleeve is not a great card in Hearthstone. <laughs> well, it doesn't do anything. Tell that to the Hunter Ace. Hey, hey, hey. You know what? You're all right. <laughs> Thanks, Kellen. This is one of the most frightening things you see on Orange's perspective, is that War Druid Lodi often feels like a super collider. Ow. <laughs> you're just looking at it, and you're like, all my stuff is going to die, and I don't want to play anything. You, you can't do anything about it. You could do something about it by brawling away your own board here, but... Well, I was, I was a bit curious about, like... Um, you know, how much nothing can you do and how long can you do it for? What because now? I think that's one of the strengths that Orange, is ha Orange has in the matchup is that with nominal pressure, you can prompt stuff from Druid still. Eventually, the Druid's going to have to play something, and that's kind of into your wheelhouse. So I think one of the concerns here is, like, how many cards can you draw off this Acolyte? What that means to me is Restless Mummy is a pretty pretty good amount of nothing, right? Um, I feel like Restless Mummy might be, like, an overcommitment. You think so? It's such a powerful card. Sure. Like, being able to Restless Mummy in tandem with Brawl means that your later Brawls become good. And so, if you're going to play the Restless Mummy, I do think this is quite interesting. You just add another bit of layer of that small pressure to it. It's going to force out a removal option if he has it. I think so. I think this is good enough to do it. The question is then, like, was it good enough without the 1-2? But it doesn't really matter. The 1-2 is just a... At best, Brawl fodder at this point. Yeah, it might not be uh, able to do it now. I'm thinking now it might be an Oasis Surger. Yep. And that means your Acolyte draws one. I was really in Orange's last spot. I was considering what the Warpath looked like. Like, it feels so weird to Warpath off your own board, but you would pick up three cards from Acolyte. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that Tice might still feel like uh, Starfall or Swipe is better here. Um, Starfall gives two cards to the Acolyte, unless you're targeting something else. So you, you Swipe... Does the exact same thing and only gives him one. You swipe. You swipe the one three. Yeah, I think swipe is a worse card as well. And the reason why I think that might be a little bit better for the long game is that going into his turn eight, where he can go innervate Cenarius, that is when you want to play your minions. Oh, no one. Ah, if that makes play a lot of your minions sense. Now, so turn seven, load up. Turn eight, yeah. Uh, you have the innervate Cenarius. Yeah. Smart. No tomb can hold me. Whoa. I guess that's not super important anymore. Yeah, free damage. No armor on Orange's side. So that's actually a pretty massive threat. Yeah, you see what I mean about the Restless Mummy? The second one now being played opens up the Wardrobe Lodi to exposing itself. So now you're just taking damage. It's interesting, though, right? Because it is. there's a lot to think about from both sides. Yeah. I, I don't think that it's just that 
being the factor that opening up Ordru Lodi is the reason why he attacked there. But it is a consequence of it. It's, it's one. It's the it's, obvious one, so it's, it's what I'm pointing out. Sure, it's the obvious one for sure. At the same time, suddenly Orange now gets a kill with the Zillix if he wants to take it. I don't think he will. I, I don't think so either. It also frees him up to play his Armageddillo as quickly as he wants. If he didn't play the rest of his mummy, suddenly the Armageddillo gets, I would say, significantly worse because... I'm kind of looking at the Warpath, honestly. The problem with that is then Oasis Surger comes down. What do you do? And Warpath is a really important tool against a lot of boards that Tice has. Remember yeah. that Orange has a Plague of Wrath in his deck, and he has no Whirlwind. I think this is just an Armageddillo turn. I don't think it's that bad. Wow. I also don't think this is that bad. It's not that bad. It's just... I feel like Zilliax is so important. Like, making a giant Divine Shield taunt later on, I have felt like is one of my ways to, like, actually stabilize the game. Yeah, that makes sense. It's also just better versus 5-5s five than a 3-2 is. That's a 5-4. Is he innovating here? So he expects this board to be cleared, I guess? But even then... Well, I'm curious about it. Like, do you need to play Scenarius next turn? Like, is Scenarius a target you ever need to duplicate with Elise? Like, you know, this tells me that Tice has a much different end game plan in mind mm -hmm. than uh, just pressuring and trying to outright end games. Like, that does feel like a way you can gas out. He hasn't had Nourish yet. He does need to find Nourish. And so if that's going to be the case, do you want to expend a Scenarius and encourage Watch Orange to down. blow up the board? Sure, but one of the ways that you lose in this matchup is by giving Warrior free, devel free development turns. If Tyson doesn't find something lined up for next turn, Orange has so much time to actually answer the scenarios. I think taking like, faith in two draws is reasonable. The fact that he used that Innervate means that Armageddon becomes a significantly better play to just fight for board. This Worthy Expedition is going to have to find something pretty I decent, I would say. I think you can start fall. Yeah. <laughs> well... One of them costs nine, and the other deals two damage to a minion. Yeah, one of them you included in your deck. The other two have been nerfed at some point. <laughs> oh, so they're just too good. <laughs> Why didn't you take them? <laughs> they were. And now I'm curious about the uh, Nubisath defender here as well. I feel like that's an overcommitment. Uh, well, it, listen. If he brawls, you're happy. And if he doesn't brawl, you're happy. If he brawls, you're happy because suddenly you can play a Scenarius and you have a minion in play. If he oh, doesn't brawl... If he doesn't brawl, you might kill him. Yeah, so... Okay. Oh, I just really wanted the Crystal Merchant to stick around. <laughs> I think I like drawing cards too much. For Orange now, it is a matter of how much can you fight for board. Plague of Wrath is a fantastic pickup. My instinct here is to use the Tomb Warden. Because I think right now, with having not seen a Nourish, you want to, Tice to like run out of stuff. And so if you start exhausting that by creating a board fight, you use the Plague of Wrath of the Brawl to close the gap on turn 9 and get to the Omega Devastator turn. How bad is a Brawl in that case, though? Because I feel like Tomb Warden is a card you'd rather want to fight what after Tice has no. exhausted his resources. Well, that, yes and no, right? So if the way that Tice is going to fight afterwards is like King Ferris or Cenarius, like I could see that being trouble with Tomb Warden. There's consequences and benefits to it both ways. And so that's what I'm curious what Orange is thinking about, which we're going to find out this turn. Yeah. Again, specifically double scenarios, I think Tomb Warden does work out a bit better because you will actually have the board clear into the board clear that you need. Yeah, I'm curious if I'm if like that is playing too much influence in my head. Oh, wow! Well, uh, another draw a brawl. Yeah, let me draw. If, here's the thing: if I know that uh, I can pick up a Warpath or a Brawl, which you're pretty likely to in, over the next couple turns, I think the Brawl looks fantastic. So I think that's part of the account accounting in uh, Orange's head too. From Tyza's perspective. Oh, you have to pressure you, here. You, you gotta play the scenarios for sure. Like, this is the reason that Druid is strong versus Warrior, is that in the face of AoE, you develop strong. So you, you force them to have that, that check every single time you do this. I wonder if you can four path here. If you four path here, you're kind of stranding your Plague of Wrath anyways. I feel like those two work pretty well in tandem with each other. 
you also there's a bunch of there's a bunch of resources like small little things that you give up by yeah. going four path instead of war path plague of wrath see pretty inversely to last turn i definitely don't want to two more here because of the risk of both a floop and the worthy expedition scenarios yeah I think this is going to yield uh, hard pressure from Tice again. Calculated risk. That's what Hearthstone's all about. Ooh, does Surger change that? Is Surger enough pressure? You saw a Warpath. There's two copies of Omega Devastator inside Ooh, Orange's deck. I, th I think this is just the play. It's just so strong. Yeah. And now. Orange responds with Brawl, Omega, Devastator, and then Tice makes that push again with Surger. Do you hero power? Do you coin a hero power armor up? Um, I mean, I, we've talked about this. I get stuck with coin in my hand all the time. It seems like this... <laughs> this, this happens uh, all the time. It today. honestly seems like a turn where you could consider it. It's 20% of your total health right now. <laughs> Save the best for Spots where it could be relevant, I'm thinking like Weapons Project Harrison Jones, and then you need like shield blocked. Weapons Project you, and Harrison, you, yep. And then you rip a shield slam on the or final draw. Or just Weapons Project Harrison Jones coin a Mega Devastator. Like yeah. that's a very it's, it's a, there are still spots for it, I think. And then Tice picks up Nourish right away, and so Orange is about to be under some real pressure. Elise is active. That's not good for Orange. Remember that... Elise with Floop is just infinite what? cards if you have the correct hand for it. Yeah, I'm pretty interested in Tice's spot uh, of starting to get my hand size contained, manipulate the positioning of the cards in my hand, and uh, pretty aggressively roll over Elise's to fight because Orange has been having to use a lot of tools yeah. uh, to keep this board contained. So now with two scenarios gone, you know that the bolstering of the board for Tice is very limited uh, to pretty much the last word of the expedition. So two more than looking a bit more appealing here. That was good alliteration. Bolstering of the board. Be better for board control. Those are deliberate attempts. They're working well. Thanks. Another warpath here. How interested are you in saving that warpath for Plague? Because that's your last warpath now. Pretty interested, I would say. Orange still has a Dynamatic, and Dynamatic Plague of Wrath also works. Ooh. It's a true story. You could also shield block coin to Morden if there's a particular draw in your deck that matters. At some point, Tice will just have an off turn. Orange will play the Tomb Warden, and... That's what he's hoping. That That's, that's the logic, right? Makes a lot of sense. Saving the coin also lets you get a Doctor Boom hero power on the turn. Oh yeah. Okay. It. I think it's Let's, at least time. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to copy a Howl or a random card from your deck? Um. I personally would much rather copy a random card from my deck. Ah. So Tice is going to say that you know what? This is just good pressure because so much AOE has been used from Orange. Yeah. You have a draw of Zephyrus in the deck as well, which would be active. So you're thinking Bloodlust. You're thinking Savage Roar. Instead of playing for a long game, why not just end the game now? Yeah, you also have swipe in hand. So even if the board gets cleared, if Orange has to expend all his mana to do that, a Zephyrus draw with swipe means lethal. It actually makes a ton no. of sense to play the King Ferris. I just want to point out right now, Omega Devastator, or Omega Assembly, into Dynamatic, into Dynamatic hitting all five targets, into Coin Plague <laughs> of Wrath. Could happen. That that From this position, that would happen some amount of times. Orange needed to tie seven off turn, and he has just not had one. That it was has been haymakers. I must two. He's gotta play two time. Two Warden and Tice Swipe. has spell oh. power in play. The spell power. I didn't even think about that. Deal six. That lets the swipe uh, tick I down. I think he just has lethal three here, man. Oh, 
he's got he's two off, I think. No, I think it's I think it might just be lethal here. Is it 15, two to the face. It might be me. It might be no. It's exactly yeah, lethal. lethal it's exactly exact lethal. lethal. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's insane. That's nuts. That was secretly like an insane Feoris. Yeah, that was like low key, super good. Everything worked out about as perfectly as possible. What is Tice doing there? <laughs> he drew a smiling face on an orange. Oh no, I know what's gonna come if Tice wins. I won't spoil it. I'm rooting for Tyson this one. I'm just going to say that now. <laughs> I really hope Tyson wins this next game. That was a very well-executed game, honestly, from both sides. Like, they both had, were weighing up the risk versus reward opportunities. And at every single step of the way, it was it was take the risk. It was play the big card, do the thing, hope my opponent misses a turn. Yeah. And, and any step your opponent missed, they capitalized. It was pretty much the Plague of Wrath getting stranded in Orange's hand. Was there a turn where instead of using a warpath, could he have just used like his Omega Devastator and fought for board that way? That that's where I think the answer is no. It's because the first opportunity he had for Omega Devastator was, of course, on a ten mana turn. He was faced with a lot of pressure prior to that point. Okay, so now to the Omega Devastator. What about Tomb Warden? Was well, there a turn? That was where my head was concerned. Now, yeah, because uh, the first scenario is when it comes down. If the Tomb Warden comes down into that, and Tice's big minions have to run into that, what that means is you've set up the Plague of Wrath now. It's very low health value, but they're very high attack minions. And so you don't have your two more anymore. That yep. sucks. But you do have Warpath, and then you do have Brawl, and you do have a Mega Devastator afterwards. Like and Exhausting Scenarius is one of the harder things in the matchup. And the hardest thing about Hearthstone is that your opponent's also smart at the game, too, when you're playing in GM. So even if Orange saved his Warpath for that Plague of Wrath, Tice could just deviate. You know, he could t have taken an off turn. He could have played his Elise the Enlightened and copied the King Feoris. And suddenly we were talking about Orange wanting the Tomb Warden for that off turn no longer would be in his hand. Yeah, I, I think that game is like Orange, he has reasons to, to not play Tomb Warden as well. I mean, I think the yeah. line he takes also has arguments to it. He's just simply seeking an off turn from Tice. One single off turn, and that's where the Tomb Warden is supposed to secure the position. So his game plan is much more decisive, whereas I think the one that I would had suggested with Tomb Warden is taking more of a risk. Yeah. Um, I think it being a bad matchup for me personally, I prefer the risk. But that's one of the reasons that Orange is such a fierce competitor is because his entire career, he has spent trying to avoid risks and instead play for superior positions. Absolutely. I mean, if you can avoid taking unnecessary risks in Hearthstone, that's what you need to work on. Yeah. That's very much, I think, a style of his is to try to to avoid unnecessary risk. But when he's got to take them, he is very good with them. Makes sense to me. Love to see it. Yep. So game number three for Orange versus Tice is uh, what we have in store. Uh, awaiting to see what they're going to end up playing in this one. Um, so here it is. Bring it on. A warrior mirror. Ooh. My lifeblood. Viper mentioned yesterday that the card people are looking for in this matchup is going to be Dr. Boom almost single-handedly. Uh, the dynamic of the matchup, I think, has changed pretty dramatically uh, from the Fright and Flunky Discoveries. When Fright and Flunky Discovery was weighted towards class me uh, class taunts, rather, there was only three options. And so you got an Armegadillo, a Tomb Warden, very often, yeah. or another Fright and Flunky for a reroll. Uh, when that changed, it took away a lot of your pressure plans. A, the neutral taunts just don't pack as much of a punch. Uh, and then B, they're not as consistent, so you don't have really as much of a defined game plan. So I think in that regard, a lot of this matchup boils down to a couple of scenarios, which is like, number one, can you snag tempo? And then number two, if you cannot, uh, Elysiana rolls. You expect the Elysiana rolls to go average on both sides, and so then number three is, how much damage can you do in the meantime when you head into a late game scenario? Yeah. Going back to your point about Fright and Funky just being nerfed, tempo now just matters a whole lot less, right? It, it matters in the late game, just like yeah. you were saying. Average Elysian is generally tempo starts to matter when the resources resources have been expand like used by each player. No. So like at some point the brawls are going to come out, the plague of are going to come out, the warpaths are going to come out, and then it comes it's up to the Elysiana cards to determine who wins. Yeah. So there's and obviously heavily involved by how the players play the matchup. Yeah. And so there's a couple things to talk about with the deck list. Uh, the first one I see is. Uh, the one-drop count. Orange has one Eternium Rover. Tice has two Eternium Rovers. 
Uh, in place of that, Tice has one Omega assembly. Orange has two Omega assemblies. I think it's a small favorite for Orange, not too much. Yet. Uh, Tice is including one copy of Weapons Project. I think a big benefit for him is that card's not too good in the matchup. But he also has a Frightened Flunky in there. Ah, so some opportunity. And then you move down the list, two of Devastators for Orange, only one for Tice. Very bad thing for Tice in that regard. And as you move all the way to the bottom of the deck list, everything else is pretty much identical. So the big one to me is the Omega Devastator uh, that Tice has, one copy of that, and the two Omega Devastators that Orange has, but he also has Acolyte of Pain as a fairly dead card in the matchup. And Orange also has two Omega Assemblies. Generally, these kinds of cards is always just like an extra thing. Yeah. And at some point, if you have enough things, you're going to get a solid lead, but an, an, an individual one is not really going to be the thing that shifts a matchup. Yeah. Interesting also with the Super Collider that's on Tice's side. That can uh, be a he very healthy function in the matchup versus two Morden, for instance. At the same time, Weapons Project checks it pretty easily. Yeah. So a lot to think about on both sides. For the most part, it is a scale to the late game scenario. Try to snag the advantage somewhere along the way. Very rarely is it one decision that makes or breaks the matchup. It's very often the person making consistent small improvements will win. Yeah, eventually it's like the straw that broke the camel's back, and it leads to a chain reaction. Yeah. The hero power that broke Garrosh's back. <laughs> Just carrying too much armor. There's no such thing as too much armor. There actually is. I think if you get, like, several billion and, like, a weird floating point error happens. <laughs> you go back to negative. Garrosh wasn't help, built to be uh, to deal with that. So Orange is thinking about a number of things. Number one, how much does this pressure mean? It's fairly nominal right now. Tice uh, does need to start thinking about hand space and pressure dynamic. You know, two dynamics in the deck, they really only work against specifically our Mega Dillo. Uh, it's a card I personally am fairly willing to, to play. However, I've gotten punished by that a number of times, where you play a Dynamatic and our Megadillo comes down, and suddenly you got a Shield Slam. It's like a really not very comfortable thing. Yep. Uh, so for Tice, you know, one of the nightmare scenarios is just being at 10 cards in hand all the time. I mean, he has a very good tempo play in terms of just like Hearthstone mechanics. A double Snip Snap turn on an empty board is quite good. Stacking him up's good. What now? I have tended to want to save my magnetizes for actually connecting, but I think here the double snip snap does threaten quite a bit. One of the reasons that I like it is that it is very early on in the matchup, so it often isn't going to get checked. Secondly, when you're on an empty board like this, just capitalizing on that by getting tempo, I think is really important this matchup. It won't the effects of it won't be felt until later in the game, I would say. But at some point Orange is just going to have like fifteen less life. This is kind of interesting. So unstacking them means that uh, they're vulnerable to, the front half anyway, is vulnerable to Warpath, but not really, because you still end up with the four one ones in play. This was the only time in, in this game, I think, that he's able to do that. Yeah. Orange, it plays around, I would say, Shield Slam pretty nicely. Yeah. And the fact that it is at seven instead of eight, like you said, Warpath is not full clear. Wow, that's really clever. And that's what you're trying to do in the matchup. Like, if your minions connect once, you're usually pretty happy with that. Th this is what I mean by, like, a minor improvement on a good play. You know, this this is one scenario where Tyus is just going to push a little bit extra damage or have a little bit more tempo going into Orange's removal turn. I want, I want to set this up because I actually think he gets a lot of extra damage. And the yep. reason why is specifically the Shield Slam. If he stacks him up, Orange is happy to Shield Slam, three path. Yep. Board's cleared. Orange is not happy to do that now. So one of two things is happening. Number one, he's getting four damage because Orange is going to feel forced to, to path here. Or number two, he's going to get additional resources from Orange later on down the line uh, by virtue of the damage that's coming in. So Orange is deviating from that. He's using up this Restless Mummy and Armoring to try and secure it. As a result, Tice gets eight damage from these minions. That is a massive tempo swing. Absolutely. Now, keep in mind... Tice can't really develop that much more into the board right now because Orange will just be able to capitalize on his removal tools. And I don't think that's really a bad thing for him. At the same time, if he does not develop anything more into the board, Orange is free to use his Warpath. And you generally don't see much better of a Warpath than right here in this spot. Bump. 
Not liking the bump. This is interesting. Is he playing Tomb Warden? He wants to avoid getting Warpath, but at the same time... Well, this is a great use of the Tomb Warden, I think, is if your opponent is set up to four path, let him. Take six more. Sure, but at the same time, what happens if they just brawl this board? Yeah, who cares? <laughs> Tice cares. Ah, I, don't I think care. He cares. I don't. That's that that is a that is a thing that he just gave up. I think getting brawled this early is perhaps a massive benefit. There's two ways that the brawls are good for you. Now, I will agree with you if Ties picks up a pretty good taunt from this Fred and Flunky. Like, if you do the average math on what taunts you get off Fred and Flunky, sure. you're, you're gonna be results oriented. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, this, this is this is math for this is math for a smarter, more intelligent person. I, I think there's two ways that the brawls are good for you in Ties' position. Number one, your opponent uses them early. Number two, they never use them at all. That's it. I think if your opponent's able to use brawl on ten minute turns, like absolutely disgusting things can happen to you. You get Brawl Mega Devastator, and you're like, oh, well, now I hit just, this is the start of the chain reaction. I don't know. I think early Brawls, if they hit this many resources, I, I think Orange is pretty happy to see that, like, see the coin Tomb Warden. This place is scary. Uh, what I to meant be by fair, I don't think Orange is upset with the Brawl. I think he's pretty happy with it. Yes. But that, to me, is the beauty of these Warrior matchups, is that both players tend to be pretty happy with their plays. Yeah, because they're both doing good stuff. You're given a confused look. Well, he traded the Eternium Rover with a 3-1. Ty says, it, Ty says a, a different approach to this, which is kind of interesting to me because he's been taking these pretty strong aggressive lines, and he's foregoing damage on it. I think Attorney Rover is one of the ones I definitely consider foregoing damage to, to kill. The reason behind what it, I assume, know? is because Warpath becomes quite good. Yeah, they do get a refund, but you, used, he, you created a 5 health swing by attacking it, right? Uh-huh. If they're able to chain the Warpath on it, it's a six health swing minus three. So they actually just benefit, even if they have Warpath. More so with uh, a one, two in play and a Warpath. No. I'm thinking Snip Snap would be the reason why. Well, Orange can also clear the four or five with the extra one attack. Yeah, that too. That's a big thing. So you gain four extra damage on the back swing okay. if he Warpath four times. Yeah, Which he's not gonna do. He's gonna deviate from Warpathing four times here because that seems dumb to just clear a one, one, and a two, two. But it still denies him the option. You can tell Orange does not want to use these two wardens at all. The goal is to our Mega Dillo, the full Monty. Yeah. At a certain point, you sacrifice that to be made. You have to close the gap on turn nine. You do not want to get your armor shredded and have the board issue compound. Yep. Yeah. And look at that. Oh, Mega Devastator. I'm sorry, the uh, Super Collider. Why did I call it a Mega Devastator? Because it deals like 10 damage. Wait a minute. Is that a mistake then? Shouldn't that little 1 2 be between these? Yeah. You're right. Oh, that could be bad. Minor optimization is admirable. It's not going to determine the outcome of this game, but it is going to be one of the small mounting things that Tice has done, I think, correctly in this series. Yeah, Tice is just going to benefit from this. Now, that being said, there are some times where you want to, like, bait your opponent into playing a Super Collider. Orange's reaction, do you see it? Yeah. I don't think this is one of those times, though. There's so much to think about in the match, and that it is, really is. That's a, it's a small thing to overlook that has major implications. Orange can't answer the Super Collider right now. That little one one's a terror right now. You would love to get that restless mummy online. Oh, this is so awkward for Orange. He has no real good plays, I would say. Yeah. What do you even do here? Restless mummy to clear off the, like you have to you have the tools to clear off the four two. Oh, I'm hurting. I don't want to I won't want to do anything. <laughs> no, but you have to. You have to get rid of the it's, damage. It's becoming too much damage. Well, that's pretty solid.
It does get a lot better. I'm not gonna say it doesn't get much better, but it you, gets a lot worse. You got three warrior mechs. It gets a lot worse. Yeah, I think that one of the major reasons that uh, Orange needed to do something here is that the Super Collider gives Tice a lot of freedom to develop. And so you just have to you have to take the hit. You just don't have a choice. You got to empty your hand. Overdrawing Dr. Boom, Elysiana, second Omega Assembly, second Omega Devastator, all of these are just... Yeah, like I think I would have been pretty happy like to just you know take a turn off, sacrifice something, sure. take the hit, but... The Super Collider is giving too much freedom for Tice, and that's really the danger of it, is if you What's give over that tempo, you can't just build tension back. Uh huh. You have to react with powerful tools. You want to use your weaker tools first. Tice has another middling turn, I would say. Nothing too powerful. What's He's spotted now? some clever stuff so far, so I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I think Tice has seen a lot of tempo opportunities that I, I was not necessarily seeing. The He's done a really good job of playing around exactly what Orange wants to do. Shoes. That belongs in a museum. I'm wondering if you super collider the 3-3, three, three, it runs into the 1-2, and then you dynamatic and run in the 1-1 one, one to the 3-3 three, three, if that ends up a better position. That was a tough turn from Tice. I do agree with the tempo on Harrison, though. Like, I just don't think you're getting too many opportunities to actually use this card. It w wouldn't it just push one extra damage on the 3-3? Three, three? Am I incorrect? Well, you'd hit it with Super Collider. That's one. Runs into the 1-2. One, that's two. One, one goes into the 3-3. Three, three. Hmm. Okay. I think the, you know, obviously the expenditure is you use a I... charge of Super Collider. <laughs> Yeah. I think as it is right now, Orange is in Oh, no, no, no. I, I apologize. Yes, you use the 1-1 one, one to trade off. My bad. I had seen the attack face and just assumed that he couldn't attack with the 1-1 anymore. <laughs> it just blew my mind. I was I was so confused for a second. Well, I am, I am a bit curious about it because for, from Tyson's perspective, if Orange is in this spot right now, unless he uses a resource, he doesn't push through the 0-1, wow, right? These were some fantastic pickups for Orange. No, you, I think you might be right here. No, I don't think I, I'm not. I'm not sold on the ideas. That's the point. There's a lot going on. Goodness, there's too much to talk about. <laughs> the TLDR. He's trying to force Orange into making a play. Good news is, is that even in this worst case scenario, Ty still has a fantastic tempo play with Dynamatic. Boom Reaver Safeguard Spring Chicken. Spring Rocket. That's what I said. Spring Chicken. Now I'm definitely confused. Light the fuses. That simplifies things for you, right? How is it a chicken? Kill their minions so they're dead. <laughs> it... Yep. So Tice is nervous. Dr. Boom now, for Orange, none for Ties. I do still want to point <laughs> Dr. Boom for Orange, Dr. Okay. Boom for Ties. I'm going to continue my point, but that's a huge draw. Dr. Boom Man Genius is not the same dynamic in this expansion as it was in the previous. In the previous, it was a much more aggressive style of matchup with Bomb Warrior was the typical out onset of it, uh -huh. or it was a Bomb Warrior versus Control Warrior. Okay. The pure Control Warrior mirrors, they were quite kind of rare. Um, and even in those situations, I still think this was the case. I digress. When your opponent is Dr. Boom Mad Genius, it is, doesn't carry the same impact as it had previously, largely due to the discover changes that have happened. You have, I would say, somewhere in the neighborhood of four to nine turns without a Dr. Boom where you can still overcome the disadvantage of not having it in that matchup. That has been my personal experience. No, I, I mean, I agree with you. I think that specifically Delivery Drone, none of the other effects were really changed, but... yeah. Suddenly, you're not looking at five to, uh, five Omega Devastators in a single game. You, right. know, you might get one on average instead. And They're, those are really important in this matchup. They use the bodies to trade in instead of just blowing up all your stuff every turn. It's yeah, like a I pretty mean, major change. The disparity between a Zap Hero Power and Delivery Drone for Omega Devastator in the late game is just enormous. Yes. So that happens less. 
do the dis uh, discovery here. So now, with Orange being unable to snag tempo, but building a very strong hand, uh, Tice having a pretty strong hand, but notice, you know, I mentioned the brawl early on for Orange. Tice's hand is getting stranded with AoE cards. While Orange, meanwhile, has used AoE and is starting to build towards that big point. I think for Tice, the fact that he couldn't capitalize on the tempo is two things that are happening. Number one, his hand is going to become all AoE, and he's ahead in a fatigue position. If Orange cannot take advantage of tempo with the strong hand that he's building, Tice is at a huge advantage because of it. So I am pretty worried for Orange. Yes and no. Since we can see both hands, Tice does not have any tools to really fight for board. His best play is pretty much safeguard hero power pass. Orange can easily beat that. I think that I'm seeing a pair of war pass, a brawl, and a plague wrath. Okay, yes, then. but those are only tools to stay alive. You know, Orange has a lot of resources. That's kind of my point, I guess, is Orange has eight cards left. Tice has 13 cards left. Staying alive, I think, is the goal for Tice right now. At the same time, I don't actually think that uh, that fatigue really matters as much. You you espouse the values of keeping more cards in the warrior mirror because fatigue can, I'll admit, sometimes matter. However, my experience playing the game, it has always felt like Elysiana will decide the game far before people will start taking like those huge hits of fatigue. You might see like two, three, four, but it's not going to go down to like twelve, for example. I'm thinking in two waves here. Uh, sure. I see your point. I think it's very valid. Uh, one of the ways I view it is in just in a resource battle in general. If you hit fatigue for it first, you have less resources. Okay, then. Yes, in some ways. Some of the resources that are in the deck aren't actual resources. Like, if Orange cycles through a weapons project, for example, but keeps an Omega Devastator in hand, he still has, like, the same amount of resources in his deck. Does that make sense? Like, yes. A shield block in the deck isn't really worth oh, the same okay, as an Omega Devastator in the hand. Do you think that the player reacting or the player uh, aggressively pushing uses more cards? The player aggressively pushing uses more cards. And who needs to aggressively push right now? Both of them, I think. Wrong! Tice is five cards ahead in Fatigue. Incorrect. Okay. By the very definition of Fatigue, incorrect. Okay. <laughs> That's the way I see it. The only pro my problem oh, with Galen, it... I love this passionate debate. The, the Keep reason, it coming. The reason why I say it is because at some point, I don't think I don't think either deck. If if you have an average Elysiana, I don't think either deck packs enough removal in the form of AOE tools to actually answer everything that the Elysiana will throw at you. That's why Touché. I'm saying both of them should be aggressively fighting for board at some point. Doesn't need to be now. And it's identifying mean, that point. Aggressively fighting for board can mean the same thing as like playing a snip snap as a single copy. It's about, it's about the definition. Don't do that, that right now. But I'm just saying it's like when does that point come up? That's what the players need to identify. Yeah. And you're saying they should be looking for that attempt every single turn. Not necessarily. I but I do think that it will come up for both. For Not taking the attempt, play. looking for it. Sure. Okay. In my head, I think Tice wants to be extremely defensive and reactive right now. I'll agree with that. That doesn't mean that that's going to be his game plan for the entire game. Well, that's, that's all. Well, that's where we stand. I think it will be. Okay. Game plans change, Admirable. And now we get to see who wins. The stage is set. All right. The Snip Snap has come out. Trip Snap. Trip Snap. I love it. You know, when you, uh... For the record of anyone who got lost in that long thing, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm very much Team Tice. Gallant is very much Team Orange right now. Yeah. My comment had no additional value. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to make the joke, like, you know when you misclick and you put the snip snap on the far right instead of the far left and you want to deal damage? Oh, yeah, the split snap. No, the slip snap. Oh. Which is incidentally also the split snap. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic <laughs> analysis of what's yeah, going seriously. on right now. Well, I mean, it's largely a visual aspect. This is just, this is brutal, and Ties, you are a pure genius. Do you see what he just did? Of course. He wants to play very reactively. It's good. Correct. That's what he did. He it was has good. the advantage. I agree, Gallen. On this specific turn. <laughs> And you know what? I've I've been saying that Tice has been playing fantastically so far this game. There's been multiple spots where he's optimized on something that was already powerful to push extra damage versus orange or play around specific things. If I'm rooting for the orange this game, 
I got to say, Tice has been playing fantastically as well. I think Orange has been playing this game very well as well. Oh, okay. I agree. He's identified, I'd say, just about everything properly so far. I agree. The Tomb Warden was the big slip up. Yeah, the, just the one, two between the two. And and all it did was Tice could capitalize on maybe like five damage. But then you look down and see how much more efficient that capitalization yeah. was. That, is that what gave Tice the freedom to play reactively? That's my question. I think this is a very difficult game, and it's going to be very tough for both of them to win. That's very fair. Warrior Mirrors I off and on. I love Warrior Mirrors. They're so fantastically beautiful. Oh, if I could hang a painting of a matchup in my house, it would be a Warrior Mirror. Next to your grandma in the boot. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent pressure turn here for Orange. This is this is really cool, and it I mean it doesn't really matter, but he uses weapon to attack the uh, the four two. A lot of times in the bomb warrior mirror is more about just pushing damage face, so you'd often see people just like trading in all of their minions willy nilly just oh, for yeah. one extra damage. I think it's slowed down quite a bit. I think using your resources like Orange is doing is very wise. Yeah, and it's, he's created a spot where the size of the minions is like just awkward enough for Tice that he doesn't want to commit to killing. Yeah. Uh, oh, but at the same okay. time, you are worried about any discoveries that provide a magnetic effect. That is when disaster can strike. And so I look at that one Omega Devastator in Tice's deck, and that's why I can turn it. So Omega Devastator largely counters that magnetic prowess. Yeah, two is more than one is what it boils down to. Two of a really good card in the late game is this better than be one of a really yeah, good card. Specifically the one that threatens you exactly in this position, <laughs> where you don't want to use anything, but you don't want to not. Yeah. <laughs> this wow. is really wow. bad. There's a whole bunch of things that come down to like the late game, like how you should sequence around certain things, a big one being the Lysiana turn. Ooh, that, that there's the board. a beautiful pickup. That's a good one. No tomb can hold me. And now my question is, do you use the mummy or do you use the weapon, and I think you use the mummy because now Orange is going up 10 cards in the hand. He's forced to play something in this spot. And so when you can create those awkward positions where Orange has to use a resource, the idea behind it is that if Orange's hand is good, but it's strong tempo tools, he has to spend something and that gives you an opportunity to react very strong yourself. Makes a ton of sense to me. Hmm. Now, from Orange's perspective, it's going to be about trying to leverage tempo into forcing ties into using key pieces of removal in awkward ways. Yep, and that's where the tempo plan comes in. You follow up with Lysiana, and Tice follows with his Lysiana. Because yours was first, you have initiative. Yep. It matters quite this a bit. This would be a good time for a master plan. It doesn't matter until it does, and when it does, it oh, it does. Well, that's the thing, right? It's it. It matters, like, how much Tice is able to hold on to. Like, how much damage can he take? How few resources can he use? The answer is he's going to have to start doing stuff because this is scary. If Orange saw Tice react the way he did, he knows that that means weakness. Tice only, uh, Tice best play, even. He only has one Omega Devastator in his deck. Second bomb drawn. Ten less health. Fatigue is starting to not matter as much, Admirable. He had a shield block. Because Orange was fighting for tempo. True story. This would be a good time for Returning Rover doesn't to do play. too much. I was thinking Brawl. Turning him over Brawl. Yeah. It doesn't do too much, so you just give yourself another you give yourself 33% to just like not have to use a shield slam. 33% to deal 16 damage sounds good to me. But also got a different plan to She's got a Plague Wrath. That makes a lot of sense. Save your resources guaranteed. Keeping it in hand. And it makes a lot of sense. We've been talking about the premium resources being what is going to force Orange to play. I think a big part of this plan is that Orange is going to 10 cards. That turn as after well. turn, it's going to 10 cards, going to 10 cards, going to 10 cards. I. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Tice knows the matchup. Orange knows the matchup, too. <laughs> it's a very interesting matchup. It's a lot of decisions. Tice, I think, wants to try to hang on to that shield slam he picked up for dear life. Uh, the goal is so that way you do not lose on the turn you have to Elysiana. You want to not take seven on the backswing. If Correct. they play Elysiana first, and then you play Elysiana second, you don't kill the Elysiana up. Ow. <laughs> This would be a good time for a master 
It smells like a weapons project. Dynamatic is also a pretty key removal piece in the late game against the random Elysiana stuff. Yeah, if you're the first player to play Elysiana, the Dynamatic is, is important. Yeah. If you're the second player, get rid of that thing. Not so much. Take it up hand space. Well, even after the Elysiana is replayed. But anyways. A whole bunch of nothing for both players. Good pickup from Orange, but it's not going to matter for quite a bit, I would say. Uh, quite a bit. Still, still good. Well, you're going to have to use something here. What do you throw away? Or rather, risk uh, to <laughs> an advantage play from Tice. I wonder if there's going to be a turn where we see Orange just play Elysiana with like maybe one card left in his deck. It's getting to the point now. Oh, like a surprise factor? Yeah. I can totally see that. That's just going to depend on what's left for him. Is that last card important or not? If this 4A doesn't get removed, it, it honestly wouldn't surprise me to see just like an Elysiana next turn even. As weird as that sounds. Yeah, this is now, a really If this doesn't get removed, point. if this doesn't get removed, I imagine Zilliax will probably come down first. You just stick a Zilliax on this bad boy and go to town, I guess. Tyus finds a clear. That is a painful way to clear that. It's very yucky. You, you've used one of your important resources. But Tyus recognizes that he ha that's something that he has to do. It's an expensive card. He's not the one battling for tempo. You don't answer a Zilliax on top of that if, if you let it live. No, you do not. This would be a good time for a master plan. I think Orange is still sensing that weakness over on Tyson's hand, and I think this was a big signal of it. Start spending your health to generate more tempo. What sounds like a weapons project yep. again. He's gonna have a lot of these turns, it feels like. A lot of these turns. The debate here is the dynamatic, so that way you can avoid not having this turn again. <laughs> Says no thank you. Gives ties a little bit of room to breathe, I would say. Not a lot, though. Yeah, the weapons project is certainly a lot better for Orange than they are for Tice. And I think Orange has found clever use of those by taking the lead on that uh, pressure plan. Pressure plan's good, man. I mean, look, Tice is left reacting, saying, I need my health. Orange continues turn after turn to get a signal at Tice. A little bit weaker, a little bit weaker. That that That's a really good draw. Orange could just go for it now if he really wanted to. Yeah. A big thing about playing Elysiana earlier than your opponent is that they can't do like the shield slam Elysiana turn that they want without also matching you in fatigue. Yeah, so the question is, how can they respond to the Elysiana? Yeah. This would be a good time for Pretty much the best play. way to respond to Elysiana is with Elysiana Shield Slam, and if you do it early, then they can often be forced into Right. And so action. that that is a, a key talking point that would be a plus one for Orange on the tempo plan, yep. is if that ends up being the case, what that means is Orange can effectively fully neutralize any potential of that fatigue plan. Mm. Even if that doesn't happen. Like, let's say that doesn't happen. Orange can still wait a turn, you know. The difference between one and four versus zero and three, it's, it's pretty minimal. Uh, Tice is obviously well, playing for a... Uh, it's become very clear to me that Orange is is, that, is concerned himself with fatigue by yeah. taking the turn off, burning the last card instead, and wanting to maximize the time for Elysiana. So I beckon the question, Gallon. Does fatigue matter? That's it. I'm out of the, the, <sighs> Smart burn from Orange to get rid of the Acolyte. It does matter. Never said it didn't. Tempo matters more. And look at what happened. Because he did not play the Elysiana last turn, he has to hold off on it again. I don't think... 
I don't think he has to here. He's seen the two Mordens from Dice. There's still a Zilliax. Let the Zilliax get buffed. If you play the Elysiana and it dies, suddenly you're on the back foot again. You got two Devastators. Ooh, Mega Defender. Mega Defender's good. Just big attack. Those, not so much. I would tend to go for the Witch Doctor here, hoping I find a random dragon card. Yeah, that makes sense. There's a lot of dragons. Extra spells are good. Well, Vera Scoundrel was actually seeing playing Control Warrior quite a bit. Generally, Highlander oh, Control okay. Warrior. <laughs> Beryllium Nullifier? Yep. Yeah, it's got Rush. Oh. Just disgustingly bad. Oh. Maybe a Scarabag to play around a Brawl. I don't know. Oh, Questing I'm, Adventurer. I'm kind of interested in all of these. Does he, have, does he have zero picks after this? I don't think it's ever Captain Greenskin. But he picks Captain Greenskin at the very end, so... It would be the efficiency guess, of the effect. I guess, I guess it is pretty good because you actually have the weapon up. I. Yeah. And so now for Tice, it's... How do you fend this off? How do you capitalize on your advantage right now? Mm -hmm. And that's tough because you are looking at an Elysiana with random cards involved. I think for Tice right now, this is an opportunity to try and do something aggressive, but I'm just not sure he has that option. The hero power lends itself pretty nicely to that, at least. You develop a pretty large board with uh, three one ones. Not huge, but pretty large. Is this the turn where you come in an Eternium Rover as well? I'm pretty interested in the Eternium Rover because I can see Orange responding like a Warpath turn. But at the same time, the Eternium Rover can be a carrier for the Zilliax. Yeah. So I think that's important. Oh, boy. This is looking dangerous for Orange. Tice's hand is so strong. It's just a strong He's, reactive He hand. saved all of his removal tools. Oh, this th this yeah, might be a game yeah. where it does go to fatigue because he still has all of his brawls, all of his war pass. The games where it doesn't are when you use like one or two of these effects, which very often happen over the course of a very long warrior game like this. Yeah, it, and a lot of this boils down to like, it's like turn eight, Tice forced to brawl early from orange. He used the Plague of Wrath with just a turning rover and a weapons project. He saved his war pass. Saved his brawls. He got to a spot where he knew he'd have more removal. Yeah. I would say that Orange had a fairly average, maybe slightly below average at least. Honor. It wasn't strong, but it, I don't think it was weak. Does that make He's sense? He's got game. He's got game. Yeah. There was one really bad outcome where he had Argent Squire, Scarabag, Goldshire Footman. That one was... Ooh, he, he had some ugly windows in there. Yeah. Some pretty good ones as well. I think you. I think the green skin take was really that was potentially clutch in this game. I think. Yep. I'll be curious to see how it pans out. Well, right here, quite well. <laughs> yeah, that's about as good as you're gonna get from it. But how does? I mean, Orange has got to unlock the Omega Devastator like sooner rather than later. Assembly, excuse me. This would be a good time for I think for player. Orange, this upcoming turn will be about, or this turn specifically, will be about getting as much tempo as possible to play around Archivist Elysiana. I wouldn't be surprised for him to see, like, for, oh, to see him okay, drop just, then. like, two minions that are very big right now, like a Zilliax alongside this. Even a 5-4 might just be enough to contest, but Elysia on a shield slam is like a like to play from ties if you develop two minions. I think I would have liked to see the Zilliax in that spot. Honestly, I might have not even minded the Devastator instead of using the weapon swing. That I'm going to disagree with, but Rust's Mummy, pretty good. Excited Mount Cellar with... It's just a 5-8, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's big. Just, like, you're going to have... What the heck? Okay, well, <laughs> well, one of them has Rush. Okay. Oh my gosh, another mummy. When for your harpy, though, is also Alex Straza. Alex Straza. That's massive. Oh boy. That's not something you can even play around.
It's not a serpent egg, Ties. Oh, well, you're thinking then. about getting trapped with Alex Straws in your hand. It's not impossible, but I, I'm taking the Alex there. It's just 15. Oh, I love that fuse thing. Maybe thinking about the Zilliax. Yeah, There's... he took the Alex. Oh, my gosh. That is such a strong Elysiana. That's fantastic. The Town Crier pulls a Rasmus Yeah, I don't want to play the Town Crier at all. All right, opportunity for orange. Devastator is this is about as good as it gets. He has a lot of powerful things he can do this turn to seize back tempo. Almost always click the button here. Good options. Yeah. Security Rover protects you against a Warpath. Maybe there's a world where you force out both Brawls and then land a Security Rover alongside a large board to deny a Warpath. One, one of the thoughts I have about it is Security Rover is good in Lysiana battles specifically because there a lot of times there's just kind of mediocre minions in play. There's just stuff. And this just creates a lot of stuff. It creates a lot of stuff. Yeah. At the same time, Mechanical Well plays it pretty nicely around Brawl. It's a big thing. It's a big, well, it's a thing. It's a small thing that when they Brawl it away is a big thing. And they have to have another answer towards it. That being said, Orange knows that there's an Omega Devastator in Tyson's hand. Ties drew all of his cards. So, Brawl Omega Devastator is a play available to him. Also, Ties just has a weapon that can clear off the 2 2. So, there's a, there, there are cons. Spring Chicken. I still just do not understand. <laughs> you never heard the term Spring Chicken? No. Oh. That's why I'm confused. Oh, well, there is a term. Got it. Yeah. I, f I figured that part out. I, did, I didn't think you were just like saying it to say it. <laughs> we're just like, ah, oh, spring uh, chicken. <laughs> spring uh, chicken. Just pick a word. Like an actual <laughs> random word. Hmm. That green skin came in hot. I'm loving this green skin it's take. It's good. It's good. Sometimes you just say dumb stuff. And this game, I said, you never take the green skin when you had a weapon. Well, the discover windows in front of the weapon. And that that was some dumb stuff. Well, it's the discover windows in front of the weapon. That's true. Understandable mistake. Yeah. Good news, Orange can click it away and see that, oh, yes, I do have this weapons project yeah. that I've been thinking about for 10 turns. Yeah. It's still there. Oh, I love that fuse thing. There's 12 damage he's got loaded in that. Unlike me, he knows about object permanence. <laughs> His hero power is gone. That's a follow-up on that joke. It's not great. Omega oh, Devastator. Wow. Omega Devastator is just so good in these Elysiana battles because pretty much the best thing you can get off of an Elysiana is just a big thing, and it checks it fantastically. It's like the very definition of a two for one. Kill your thing, make a thing. Mm, I don't know about this one. Only the finest I'm pretty interested in not taking five. Maybe overvaluing or undervaluing Omega Devastator there? I think he's overvaluing it and undervaluing health. Yes. That would be my opinion. Yes. Maybe, this was maybe he thinks with two Devastators, actually, that he takes the lead in tempo. Like a brawl turn following up with a hero power, and then the next Ooh. turn just... Well, he's got a Warpath in hand. Like, the exotic Mount Cellar Warpath, Warpath can threaten. Like, if Orange's response here is to build tension... And if Orange's response isn't to build tension, it means he's fighting for board. And if he's fighting for board, that opens up your war passenger brawls anyway. It's kind of interesting. That's that's true. Maybe that's worth the expenditure of hmm. of life. It's still pretty close, right? Fatigue yeah. is going to deal about 20 extra damage to Orange if this goes long. Oh, just using a Plague of Wrath here. Smart. I like it. Omega Devastator. Don't do important. nothing. You make use of your weak hero power, I would say. It's an arguably weak. 
it's important. Classic rule of Hearthstone. Your thing lived. They played a thing. Kill their thing. Attack them in the face. That was four for four. Classic. Orange is the cheese. Just doesn't get any simpler than that. This is a this is a gross warpath for Orange. This is a fantastic warpath for for Tice. Orange got damage out of that deal though. That's true. The gross part I think is the three one ones. Yeah. I'm like, Dang it. <laughs> There's just twelve sixes in his deck. Yeah, I'm curious if uh, Orange is perhaps on like an aggressive warpath here. Are you suggesting something like Warpath, okay, Omega Devastator, then. or Omega Defender, Hero Power Face? I'm kind of, that's the line I'm somewhat in. I don't know if he needs to Warpath. Like, what do the three one ones actually represent, is my question. I do like Zapping Face here. I think the damage is starting to add up and yeah, be relevant. Yeah, for sure. The thing I'm looking at for Orange is like, okay. I really want to open up this box. Yeah. And so if you're going to open up that box, I guess you could just do it now. Oh, that's big. Goblin. All of those are really fantastic. Yeah. You talk about getting Warrior Mechs, that's three for three. Correct me if I'm wrong, but he is six for six on Warrior Mechs off of Omega oh, Assembly. That's, this game. that's correct. I'd love to see the Zap go face. I understand if he wants to kill a minion here. He wants to protect his 12 6, but. Damage. Face. He's looking down and seeing that uh, on his notes that there's a warpath left, and so he's trying to protect. I, but that's the thing. I don't think him using warpath is bad for you at all. He, Orange just put seven damage into minions. Seven. That's a lot. Into one ones. That's a lot. You know how much I do to get seven damage to my opponents? A lot. A lot. I think Orange is approaching this it from a, good time a strong angle. I think in that spot, yeah, was seven to face. Now, no, he knows there's a buff to left. Yes. But you're you're hitting off mostly armor there. The sooner they use it, the better. Committing to board for ties just seems way too short-sighted. I'm like I like oh, how yeah. he's been approaching it for the last dozen or so he, turns. He has to be in pure reaction mode. He's yeah. been that way for was it like a dozen turns now? Yeah. If he deviates from that, it's going to go bad quick. Yeah. But Orange is not short on haymakers. Doesn't get the battle cry. You're happy about that. <laughs> Alex, it, that's still in the deck. I'm not going to lie. I may have forgotten about that. <laughs> there is one other dud from Tyza's perspective in his deck. Was there? I believe so. Two mummies. Exotic Mount Cellar. Spring Rocket. Spring Rocket, that was the dud. That's, a, that's It acts fast. Okay, if you're getting 10 Spring Rockets off your Lysiana. That's 20 damage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just talked about what I'd do for 7 <laughs> damage. Just Moonfire. Oh, yes. Oh, it's one damage. It's free. Orange does not know about this Omega Devastator and ties his hand. This is going to be heavily punished. Ready to glow. I see a vision in the flames. And why would he play around it? It's unlikely. Ooh, mummy. You might do, just do that instead. From Ty's perspective, right? That's just so clean. Well, I'm not 100% certain. I think I'd rather have the Devastator than the Mummy, that's for sure. Which leads me to believe he's going to play a Restless Mummy. You good got news plenty from, more Mummies, you don't have plenty more Devastators. The good news from Orange's side is he is not letting up the pressure anytime soon. He has plays for days. 
No tomb can hold me. That discovery is so good. No tomb can hold me. Just what if we were both wrong? He just discovers a Mechathune. It turns out to just be a Mechathune well, game. Well, I mean, that's it's pretty rare. He still has a shield block in front of him. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Tice. He forgot. He is that the? Oh, oh. So now he's only one behind, correct? Um. Well, there's he's still, still a bomb in his deck. Yeah. It. Uh, well, that's that is not an okay mistake. That. Oh. Hecklebot. Yeah, that's a big deal. Orange is suddenly ahead in fatigue. There's one bomb in his deck. Now, Tyus is the one that's forced it into this scenario because of the fact that he did this, just well, such a good job of using his resources. It's gotten pretty even, but the difference now is that Tyus uh, is taking the even ticks of Orange. So, like, when Orange takes a tick of one, Tyus takes a tick of one. That's what's going to end up happening here when the Hecklebot Are you out. sure? I, th I think there's a bomb in... There's one bomb, right? There's four cards yes, to one yes, card. Yes, yes, So there, it's... Yeah. Orange is half a tick ahead in fatigue. Yes. You're right. Yes. You said it right, and I was just rephrasing it myself because it takes me a while to process some things. Hmm. But yes, you were correct. Oh, I love that new thing. But he's way ahead on board. So the Alex Draws is a big kicker to me. Oh, this game got way tighter. Oh, that is good for Tyce. Having his Alex Straza pulled, I think, would actually have been quite poor for him. I don't know if that's the case. I kind of wanted just an 8-8. Eight, eight. Um, that's that's hard to tell. You know, it's just going to get blown up the turn it happens, but hmm. sure. it forces the removal, plays into a brawl, and Tice is not interested in wow. trying to clear off a security rover, it seems like. I'm not really interested in it either, and that's really... Kind of the talking point. Every way you rubber. clear it is just so ugly without the brawl. You yeah. you you definitely need to win this brawl. If 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 the security rover lives, that is security rover lives, you I think you take yucky. damage. It's very yucky. Yeah, you just you just pass. But then that activates Orange's Warpath right. to actually be an, an aggressive tempo tool. By far the best one, you can't complain. I guess if you're orange you could. Spring chicken. Spring chicken. What's like the summer animal? Uh, summer chicken? <laughs> <laughs> oh, summer rocket. There we go. <laughs> oh, okay. Face me, you no can yep. Me. That town crier was a bad thing. Tice is... He's, it's going to be hard for him to forget that. Oh, Everything looked so perfect painful. right up until that one little town crier. And the instinct on it, I see how he made this mistake, actually. It was, my head was telling me, well, this is an easy mistake to make. I was like, how? Once you play your second copy after Elysiana, there's no more in the deck. That's your yeah. thought. There was four <laughs> Restless Mummies in the deck after Elysiana. Not two. It's a very natural mistake to make because you're considering so many other factors that once you've gotten to the point, you've autopiloted to say, oh, both of them are gone. Yeah. You'd seen two. Why would there be four? Because that's what you took. <laughs> I like this line from Orange where he values health on his minion. Last card for Tice is a bomb. And he always has to take it, right? I bring life. So now that's going to force Zilliax out of orange. Does it, though? Not necessarily immediately, no. At some point, yes. But look at what just happened. A mech stuck on board for orange. This is the first turn in the game where orange can actually attack with a mech. So based on that, oh well, you know that you know the last card is a bomb. Well, the Hecklebot now is just four mana three eight. Like that's still ridiculously that's just good. good. Yeah. yeah. Like that's the thing about Hecklebot in warrior matchups it's is good. it's no matter what, it's just good. Yeah. I suppose if they have you know like six Colossus of the Moon in the deck, maybe 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 that's not good. But you get my point. <laughs> Did you catch that game? 
from APAC. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Colossus of the Moon. Love it. That's one of my favorite cards. It's a big, dumb thing. <laughs> Just it, like me. The biggest and the dumbest. <laughs> okay, then. Oh, the one thing about Zodiacs thing. is that Orange knows about the second Alex Drazano. If you heal up, you're actually, you're not really like gaining that health against the second Alex. Okay, so he's using the Whelp to kill the Alex. His concern is mana efficiency of future plays. Makes sense. First hit of fatigue for Tyson. The hands are ridiculously close in terms of card quality. What I will say is that Orange is on the front foot. He is the one with tempo. He does not need to... He needs... Tyson needs to react. Yeah, to me, this is going to be a timing of the second Alex Straza. How does Orange proactively set up against it, and how is Tice able to manipulate that timing in his favor instead? One thing i got to say is that this game is far from mathematically solved as well. There's so many things you have to account for in terms of hero power. Yes. Like, you can... It is technically solved from this point, but you're not going to be able to do that. It's, like, weakly solved. Yeah. Instead of strongly solved. That's what, yeah. Get another strong mech down that has a body attached to it. I, I, Orange's hand quality is just so high. You have an answer for the second Alex Straza. You have, like, the most damaging mech you could put on something to uh, deny pretty much everything for ties hmm. in terms of brilliant nullifier. Yeah. That being said... Orange right now, you can see him. He's currently working on how to map this out, and so... Save he's been, you know, tech, checking the tools on Tice's side, and he's finding a timing where the magnetic connection is a major swing. <laughs> he should know about every single card in Tice's hand. Besides the Omega Devastator, that is a random mech that he does not know about. <laughs> Second Beryllium Nullifier is just such a big deal. Tice has held on to dear life to this brawl and this warpath. He he still doesn't know about the brilliant nullifiers, by the way. No, he does not. Uh oh. That's a seven six Ziliax? Yeah, the Armageddon <sighs> sticked around for two turns. Oh it's big. <laughs> I thought it was a five four. No, 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 no. Oh, that's way different. If Tyus plays this big dub thing in Alex Straza, I he's don't like going that. to get checked massively oh, by yeah. the Ziliax. He's going to get destroyed actually, if he plays that Alex Actually Straza. murdered. He knows the other Ziliax is left. He's like, you cannot do that. And then you saw him kind of stop himself and go, what am I doing? You can't pass. If you pass, it just means the same issue but worse. Right. I think this is the right call from it, is you build tension at this point. You are technically the aggressor because Orange is set into a fatigue spot. You have a bigger Ziliax than Orange does. It has to be responded to on Orange's side. Play a big dumb thing. Don't get murdered by Ziliax. Exotic Mountain Cellar. Yes. Blessing. This this is a fantastic hero power for the spot for Ty's. Discover a mech is, is really just what you want. I, I wonder if he's going to get driven off of this by the uh, the Beryllium Nullifier. Like, you got to answer that. Magic neutralized. Take one. I'm pretty shocked by that attack. Weaponized pinata. I was wondering if Rusty Recycler ever had merit. I don't think it does. No, it's the pinata. It has to be the pinata. Where Tice and Orange right now are fighting a value game for their dear lives right now. The thing, the reason I was thinking the Recycler was just a bigger uh, body carrier for the Ziliax. Like the six health would now pip it outside of a single Omega Devastator. But I At think the same time, you can just play a weaponized Minata right now. Yes, I think number of cards is important. It also checks that Ziliax as a carrier on that on that zero five. 
which would be massive. So now, Orange, that fatigue is setting in hard. He's got to find a way to either re-snag this tempo or deliver pressure or fend it off and take the lead somehow. Those are big tasks. You know that there's an Alex Strauss on the other side. If you've been keeping track, is something like Omega Devastator Zilliax aligned? Could you Omega Devastator attach a Zilliax onto the Omega Devastator, player. trade it in, or even keep it up with a Divine Shield? Is that... If, if you know the context of his hand, you know you should know about the Warpath, the Zilliax, the Brawl, the Shield Block, and the Alex Straza. I'm thinking the Brawl. You should know... It's really hard to keep track of these kinds of hands over a long game. Often you might forget this of one tool. But there are some player. things that can help you, like... Players are allowed to use a deck tracker. You can see the fact that only one Warpath, only one Brawl has been used. I mean, what's the best outcome here with this hand right now would be the Brawl, right? Like, your zero one survives. That gives you an opportunity, perhaps, to capitalize. Oh, I love that fuse thing. I'm not sold ah. on that because it might not be quick enough. Ah, yes. Like, this became a problem. This was all beget by the Alex Straza. Unity, wow. A death wing. Wow. That is insane. <laughs> what? That is insane. <laughs> For Tice now. Can you simply Warpath and force Orange to have to respond first? A Warpath here is just fantastic. This would be a At the same time, Deathwing is d unbelievably huge. Like, Viper one of the weeks included this in his deck to be the final sweeper against decks. And it was, you looked at it on paper, his matchups that week, it was like, oh, this is game winning. Like, you can't you found play a way to around it. it. It's unknown. It's just a random legendary right now. It's honestly better than Chef Nomi against what Orange has. Like, legitimately, it's better than Chef Nomi against what Orange has. I'm, like, blown away by how big that is. Bye. Fatigue is aggressive. You can never take tempo away from fatigue. Ties looks like he has this game locked. Oh my. Weaponized pinata. We are not out of the woods just yet. I mean, I'm thinking the Hecklebot too. Like, it's just a 3 8. Like, do you need the extra resource? Do you need the extra body? Like, Orange is the one prompted to have to put something in play right now. It says oh, add a okay, Deathwing to your hand. So far in this limited sample size, that is what it does, okay? <laughs> True story. This is just hard. <laughs> this is... If Orange could see Tyza's hand right now, you you're taking the weapon. Oh, I love that fuse thing. I am not comfortable. Face me, you cowardly bluff. It makes a lot of sense. Biggest health, carrier for the nullifier. I bring Deal the five. Fatigue it coming. Six now for Orange. He's got two turns. The Deathwing is just going to lock it up. Tyus could literally just Deathwing next turn to lock it up. How do you win from the spot as Orange? You have to answer the Deathwing. You have to stay above Tyus is a taking very large life total. Next turn he goes to 11, and then he would take seven and go to four. But you stop the 4, 5, and the 3, 8 with the Deathwing. I don't think the Devastator is the right play here. He doesn't know about the Deathwing is the thing. So I think from his perspective, it probably is the right call. <gasps> 
Does that change the map? Ziliax Hero Power. It's a 7 5 Ziliax. That is true. But then Brawl from Orange could maybe put well, the fatigue could back. Go in. up to 22. I, I understand that, but you're going to be taking like oh, two ticks of fatigue. Oh, just Brawl. Oh, that's so much smarter. Wow. That was a. That was a. No, 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 no. He goes up to 22. Orange takes a hit and then has to close in the next turn. Yeah. So now he has to use the hero power. You had the Ziliax in play. Even if there was a Hecklebot in the way of this and Orange brawls and wins it and the hero Even with up to Okay, 11. well, I mean, Ties just has it mathematically locked out yeah. because even with that, he has hero. Ties! That was impressive. Wow. It just comes down to the wire at the very end. It and comes there, down to the wire. And there were so many different little optimizations throughout that match that Tice took, I think, that put him in that spot where instead of having to worry about <laughs> like two turns down the line, he just gets it immediately. Now, there were, there, were, the, there, were some, the there were there some there were some very small slip-ups, like you mentioned, the town crier for the restless mummy, for example. Over a game of course this size, I would expect some slip-ups. Um, however, it didn't come in the fashion that I would normally have anticipated, which is like the ones that I would say are typical or a player misinterprets their spot in the match. Very reasonable to do. The town crier with the rush in the deck, I'm just like, come on, man. Yeah, I don't think I don't think either player really misinterpreted it. That's the thing. It's macro planning, I think that it's in the right spot. My question would have been on Orange's side, which with as much trading it was as was done, I he do think... He missed a lot. He missed if, seven, and then there was another turn where he missed eight. If you're the aggressor in a matchup, I think you need to be seizing your damage, even if it means that there's strong pushback, because the point of the tempo, yeah. I think... Is to is to make those pushes. It would have been a way, lot though, closer. I think Orange did a fantastic job of making an aggressive push in a spot where he can't necessarily always make that call. Uh, Tice is ready for an interview. Tice, can you hear us? Yes, perfectly. Woo, what a, a, game. <laughs> a marathon of a match, and what a game three it was. And I, I'm, I love to see some of your showboating. What was what were you doing with the orange? You just drawing happy faces on the oranges. Yeah, I was just happy every time I would win a game against Orange. I was like, let's just make a, a smiley face on Orange. And I was like, yeah, I'm happy I won. <laughs> well, talk to me about this match, my friend. A lot of cool stuff happened in this one. But for you, what are some of the highlights and the standouts? Um, well, I think the main part was obviously game three. Like the first game, well, I just didn't really have much to do with my pal. And actually got the Shivala almost going. What kind of confused me a bit at the end. Second game, even though I didn't draw Norris with my Druid, I felt like still... Really good. I feel very comfortable in the matchup. And once both brawls were played, I had so much freedom uh, that matchup. And well, then game three, that was uh, kind of strange because both me and Orange, we are not the greatest control warriors players, if I can say so. At least we are not like playing the deck that much. So I think we both had maybe here and there some uncomfortable spots. But I think I actually played it very well. I was very happy with my play. I had one like really big slip up with like the town crier that put me one fatigue where I just completely thought it was a. Uh, then it was just like after LZN, I just doesn't work anymore. So it was just an, a little brain error. Um, but I was actually very proud of my uh, play in game three for the rest. I think we felt the same, honestly. Uh, from Orange's side, there was maybe a few slip ups where it was like, huh, he could have pushed extra damage. There was one turn where he didn't really play around a super collider. He could have put the town crier in the middle. And besides, besides your town crier slip up, we thought mm -hmm. you played fantastically. Um, the turn. One of the turns that happened very early on was uh, the snip snaps. I just want you to go through your thought process about how you like portion out the snip snaps as two threes and two threes instead of a four six. Could you talk us through that? Yeah, like I was also a bit confused by Orange plays early where he just really went aggressively shield block and like he drew actually so much what kind of got me off my like plan how I would normally approach the matchup. Um, but Snip Snap, yeah, I was like, he might just, um, like, it wasn't, uh, he couldn't fully clear with Barpath, otherwise I would have definitely made it. It was mainly just um, to play a bit better around Shield Slam, and I felt like if he would play the, the Tom Barnett the turn afterwards anyway. So, it think, like, I think these turns were, like, very limited, but I was really happy with the mid-game plays of where I just kept him all the time on 10 head cards. I forced him all the time to just play and use my more as a reactive tool, and... I think that paid me off, and that's why I won the game. And, and talking about your positioning uh, in the division now, you move up to a 6-6 six and six record, and it's pretty tightly packed throughout. Um, how are you mm -hmm. feeling about your next two matches and your playoff hopes? 
Well, my hopes are all for the playoffs. Like we have a little bit of a strange group where like just everything can happen. But my goal has always been playoffs, and that's where my my mind is. Um, so I'm very happy I pick up this very important win against Orange, who was also uh, five five. I'm just going 1-1 one, one almost every week. Well, last week I had a 2-0, but it's just going all the time. I'm just there at place 4 or 5, and I'm like, yeah, we'll see where this ends. Hey, <laughs> PNC won in America's after going 7-7. Seven and seven. Uh, Yeah, well, maybe let's just make it 2-0 uh, next week to just secure <laughs> that spot. How about that? Well, one up them and, and get to BlizzCon yourself, I think, is uh, probably one of the only ways to do that. Tice, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Congratulations on your win, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was a marathon of a of a match that took place. Oof. But I, you know what I always love about Tice is he finds like cool little ways to have like that extra bit of showmanship in a match. Yeah, like I always like to see that. He has good interviews, good camera work. We see some people just maybe not care as much about it. Amnesiac last season with just like a quarter of the backdrop in his background. <laughs> So it's good. It, it shows some like professionalism. I think Ties is a true Hearthstone professional in every sense of the word. Agreed. And uh, you know him and Orange are certainly friends, and uh, they've been competitors for a long time. Yeah. Very storied legacies between the two of them. So that was a marathon of a game. We're going to a quick break. When we come back, we're going to be jumping into our fifth match of the day, uh, which is Colento taking on Viper in this one. So stay tuned. Our fifth match with a bonus one is coming up.